Hi everybody. Today I'm using my Cardi watercolour sketchbook and we're going to paint this mother hen and some of her chicks in this lovely scene using the Holbein artist gouache. Let's go. Okay guys, I love that you can fold the page back on this. I've got some dried gouache that was there from the front cover. I keep my paint there, but I've got my new um, pencil case by the Lee Hit Labs. So I put my paint now in to this pouch along with my concertina sketchbooks now gouache should always be used fresh that's what i would recommend i don't agree with gouache being put into travel palettes even the airtight ones because it just loses some and most of its character. Gouache should be uh, used neat, basically, you know, and not let it dry out and crack, otherwise it's more like a watercolour than using the creamy texture. You lose the creamy texture once it starts thickening up and dehydrating. That's my personal opinion. Just putting a little bit of blue. Yeah, use very little. You don't need much at all. Put a little bit of white. Just there. And I will get my yellow ochre because I think there's enough dried yellow at the minute on my palette. Okay, here is the yellow ochre. I'll just put a little dab in there. And I'll be using my two brushes by Princeton, an Aqua Elite and a Velvet Touch. They reconstitute really quite quickly, I have to say. But you're still not going to get the velvety texture. I did have a go at adding pen work to this paper, but it doesn't actually work properly. I'm just going to wet up here. We'll probably add in any pen work if it's needed afterwards on this kind of paper but basically it is for wet into wet technique with watercolour or gouache. Annoyingly I've got one of those bristles sticking out on this Aqua Elite that's just over a month old. I think the cap, the plastic protectors cap, even though I put it in damp, it might catch one of the bristles. 
and I like to have the cap on it so you obviously keep the bristles in place but what I do is put soap on it when I'm cleaning and really um, put it into shape and then squeeze and then put it back in and hope that I can save it. <laughs> Good, it, it's happened a couple of times which is aggravating. So, I'm going to be mixing up, I think, using the yellow that's in there, just a, probably a bit too much blue, but we're going to do a green here. And I'm going to take some yellow ochre here. It makes a lovely, nice green there. I just want to get all of that down as a base. they're outside so there's lots of greenery in the background and I really like to spread out my paint make it go as far as possible I notice with gouache it does need a lot more rinsing off of your brush because it tends to cling to the brush more. I kind of let that dry a bit and I'm wondering now what we do need to do is make a bit of a red. So I'm thinking Taken some magenta and yellow, and we've got a nice red here. But if I go in, it's going to be a bit too. Can you see? I like that red though. And I did that with just magenta and yellow. So you think you're making orange, but you'd only make orange if you add more and more yellow. Until then, you actually are getting red, which is really cool. I quite like this effect actually. This is kind of fun. Not being paranoid about neatness it's kind of difficult for me <laughs> to be so loose so I want to do a yellow base for I know you're thinking chickens are not yellow they're not yellow but underneath their layers of feathers they have a kind of yellow undertone in places under the kind of the browns and yellow ochre colors and also we're doing interpretation you know otherwise take a photo if you want it to be a complete replica, just take a photo. <laughs> I'm not into realism, like photorealistic. 
so now you probably can't see this palette as such but I'm going to take more of the cyan and I don't mind if I have to fill up again my tubes but what I, I don't want is to have excess paint that is then wasted well not wasted but dries out I'm really not keen on the dried out paint but it's not done too bad a job I think obviously the better the quality of paint will give you better quality results but I still don't advocate doing the gouache in the uh, palettes at all the air tight palettes for traveling i mean really gouache is for the studio and watercolor you can take anywhere but gouache for me it's a studio based thing as i say it's just my preference there's lots of artists um, YouTube and around the world that will uh, put, put the gouache in airtight palettes and do a spritz of water you know each every other day or each week just to keep them moist and there's no trouble I just don't like the texture of it and I really don't like the hemi gouache I refuse to use it because it's just too it's just not gouache <laughs> It's just thick, jelly horridness. I can see that without even trying, which is why I did a video on my channel. If you go looking for it, um, you can make your own version of that Hemi gouache without spending the money. But I think it's overpriced, Hemi gouache. I really do. It's um, just thick. It's like they've just added cornstarch to a kid's paint, really. It's not light fast. Like Copic markers, the expense of them, the price, and the ink is not light fast at all. So I say if you're an alcohol marker artist, you can just get away with buying the cheapest possible from like wish.com, is it? Or eBay or anywhere, just any brand will do. You don't have to go for branded, but when it comes to gouache, you really, really do. You won't be disappointed. I mean, actually, I think these have worked out cheaper than getting um, schmink, schminke. The Academy gouache is, uh, was harder to get hold of. It could be 30 to 40 euros for a set of five to six tubes they're quite big tubes on amazon but these for me now are better quality but these are not academy grade these are professional grade these actual holbein watercolors so if you compared these to professional schminke gouache i don't know which one would win i i haven't got enough professional schminke gouache to do a test for that and i'm loving this so i probably am not going to uh, swap uh, and I, i'm trying to go for professional but budget friendly if that kind of makes sense it doesn't really but to me it does these are gonna last forever for me well not forever but for a long time and you've got the five colors that will make almost any color that i want i'm really amazed that that's made red magenta the primary magenta and the primary yellow i really am amazed it's all about the amount of each color that you put in there is a black included in the set and i I understand why they did that, but I probably wouldn't have included black. I would have maybe done a Payne's Grey 
I mean, if you mix all the colours together, you're going to get a kind of blackish colour anyway, aren't you? So I wouldn't have bothered adding in black, personally. <laughs> That's just me. I may have added two tubes of white because if you're really into pastels, then you're going to get through a lot of white. A lot of people get through a lot of white with gouache, and I am no exception. Now, it's kind of mixed here, and ending up with a bit of a pink bucket here. Because a bit of white mixed with a little tiny bit of magenta. So that's made a really nice, pale, kind of movie colour. And I like that this paper isn't deteriorating. You know, you can go back and forth and it's really nice. It's holding up. I mean, it's way better than the, um, what is it called, the Indigo sketchbook by Artway that I really thought was going to be like this. Again, I think it's handmade paper from India, but this paper is way better. It's not deteriorating, whereas the indigo one was deteriorating and you couldn't really put much on it. Even when you put gesso on it, just, I don't know, things just were not working. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with some of this yellow ochre. And yes, this is part of my food art project, guys. Or my life project. <laughs> it's fascinating. I'm finding out so much information for this project that um, I didn't know before. So many different foods from around the world. And, you know, it's really amazing that all of your favourite foods and everything just wouldn't exist if it wasn't for farmers and bees. You do have other things pollinating, but not to the extent that bees do. We've got a lot of, uh, I think the farmers down south in France are having problems, well, farmers all over France are having problems at the moment, but down south, they have a lot of drought going on, and they're suffering big time, and crops are having problems because they're not getting what they need at the times of year that they need it. You still have to plant your seed when it's the time of year, and if, you know, they haven't got the weather that is needed, it's really, really hard. With the vines, they, if it's uh, too frosty when it shouldn't be, they have to light fires around the vines to keep the roots warm, which is amazing. I thought that it would set fire <laughs> to the whole vineyard but it doesn't. It, it's more like um, just having like a, a, a cosy warm fire for the vines because it's their livelihood and so much work goes into them. I 
I think I said earlier, didn't I, that I tried pen on this and it didn't work very well. So, uh, we can make purple, really nice purple there. boo-boo there. I'm going to see if I can just wipe it away. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to finish off in a time lapse, guys, because using this paper, it takes a very long time to dry. So we're having to wait in between the layers drying naturally. I'm not using a dryer gun thing, a heat gun. And so we're building up the layers. I had a quick look at the leaflet just to give me some tips about colour mixing, but it didn't really give me much help. So it's more about trial and error, which, you know, is how we learn. If you can manage to get your hands on this beginner starter mixing set by Holbein, I really, really do recommend that you give it a go. There doesn't seem to be any dangerous chemicals. It is non-toxic, which I really like. Always remember though to wash your hands after you have used it and try not to get the paint on your skin and obviously don't have any drinks by your painting area because you could accidentally put your paintbrush into your drink and forget that you've done that <laughs> and I've done that over the years and so I don't have any drinks on my table or food items. It's such rich in intense colours and you see this the more that the layers get built up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's free to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe just means to follow. And when you do follow me, YouTube will notify you every time I upload a new video or post a short or a comment. And also, if you hit the like button, it lets YouTube's algorithm know that you found entertainment, fun or useful information from my video and it helps promote my content to more viewers and in turn I'm incredibly grateful.